There we go. Another one with that guy. Just still up here in these shallow reeds. He's a little bit, well, I say shallow, but may, there may be like, uh, there's maybe about three foot of water underneath them, I think. Something like that. But uh, yeah, another decent uh, post spawn. All right, would you look at that? First largemouth bass, Lake St. Clair, post spawn, little male. Got him on the uh, pink Berkeley slobber knocker. Out here doing some exploring today. We'll get him back in the water, but uh, hope you guys are doing awesome. I am actually on a solo mission today in Lake St. Clair. It's gonna be windy and rainy, and I decided to come out here, make a solo trip, and see if I couldn't get on some largemouth bass up here in these reeds and these canals. So, never done this before. Um, you know, it's kind of a new adventure for me, but just out here kind of doing my normal thing, you know, fishing areas that I'm comfortable with, like say up in northern Michigan or, you know, wherever. But uh, yeah, just out here working these reeds. I've been out for about 15, maybe 20 minutes, maybe half an hour or so, but just got the first post up on mail. I was actually working my way to the canals because it's super windy. Um, it's going to start raining. I don't have my raincoat, unfortunately. I thought I did. I got my rain pants, so I'm not sure how long this video is going to last. But stay tuned and see if we can't get a few more uh, largemouth. I really want to try to get some smallmouth, but I think the wind is going to keep us from doing that. So stay tuned and see if we can't get a few more fish. All right, so I just got that first fish, and it was on the pink Berkeley slobber knocker. And now I'm in Lake St. Clair, and this water is super clear. It's probably about two foot deep, and there's these reeds back behind me. The wind's pushing me this way, so I'm going to cast this way for a minute. But, um, yeah, even in this, in this shallow, clear water, don't be afraid to throw pink. And um, I'll show you guys in a minute if I catch another one, kind of some of these reeds I'm fishing. But they're very similar to the ones I fish up in northern Michigan. And, again, it's windy. And like I've mentioned to you guys in a previous video, I really like throwing a bladed jig in these kind of reeds with this windy condition because you got the waves kind of beating and banging and crashing on the reeds and the and the uh the bottom of the, of the lake and it makes a lot of noise i like throwing a swim jig in these reeds but it's hard to throw a, um the swim jig doesn't have the draw power i don't think especially when it's windy like this so i like to throw a bladed jig and this berkeley slobber knocker with that through head pin design which i've showed you guys before works really really well for this stuff so i'm just going to fan cast this area and keep working. I uh, cast it way back in here. Again, I'm using this uh, Berkeley slobber knocker on, I think, 30 pound pink camel beyond braid. And I'm just doing it because I'm back here in these reeds and I got to horse these fish out of here. Catch a lot of big northerns uh, in this kind of stuff. So the braid doesn't seem to bother the fish, at least uh, from what I've seen. And uh, yeah, so we'll see if we can't pick up a few more. That was a post spawn male. I don't think he was on a bed. His tail was really raw, but um, yeah, we'll see if we can't find some more. And if it gets too windy, which I think it's going to, I'm just gonna work my way up into these canals and maybe flip and pitch these canals and uh, see what we can find. So see what happens. There's one. Feels like a decent one. Oh, get a, oh dang, it came off in the grass. Ah, oh, I felt like a better fish. Again, just cast in these reeds. That's two right here. Actually, might mark this spot. But uh, yeah, you guys can kind of see these reeds I'm fishing. Again, using this Berkeley slobber knocker. And I, I really like using, like I said, a swim jig in this kind of uh, conditions. But with it being so windy, I like to throw a bladed jig. I mean, this Berkeley slobber knocker, it's not weedless. Right, like I mean, it it goes through the reeds, but at the end of the day, it's still a bladed jig. But definitely recommend picking up some of these. Um, I custom dye these ones pink. If you guys want to see how I dye these pink, I'll actually tag a video or link a video so you guys can check it out. But uh, yeah, that's two right here. So I think I'm gonna kind of keep working this big reed flat and uh, see if we can't pick up some fish. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so I just turned the camera off, unfortunately. But look at this nice. Uh, post spawn female I got some pretty cool colors on her but absolutely choked that pink slobber knocker so we'll get this fish back and uh yeah Ugh, quit there's a pike I was messing with just a second ago and uh I guess um there's bass in here so Let's see if we get a few more
There's one. Pike. Little pike. Oop. Maybe not. <laughs> well, it's a close one. Man, they do like that pink slobber knocker. So something that a good buddy of mine, Dylan Grove from Extreme Outdoorsman, said that if there's where the pike are, the bass are. And if you catch a pike or a predatory fish, this is something that the legend Dean, Dylan's dad, taught us. Um, or he taught Dylan and then he taught me this is whatever the pike are feeding on that's what you need to be throwing as far as their color for bass and the pike have been chewing on the pink slobber knocker so I'm gonna keep throwing it oh man I don't know what that was that it just bit through 30 pound braid like it was nothing crap well crap so I guess that was one thing that I was going to mention too especially here in Lake St. Clair um, you definitely want to be fishing braid because of uh, musky and I think that's what might have just took my slobber knocker so even with uh, I think 30 pound braid wasn't enough because uh, that fish wanted it more than I did so it's like I'll tie in another one. Dang it. I hate it when they eat them slobber knockers. I <laughs> uh, hope I got another pink one somewhere. Down to my last, well, I got one more slobber knocker, but I gotta change the uh, clip because the, uh, the clip that connects the blade is straightened out almost. <laughs> that must have been a big musky or a big northern or something because I think this is 60 pound braid and it just walked through it. So, yeah, you're fishing these reeds, you're targeting largemouth bass in Lake St. Clair. Make sure you're uh, fishing these reeds, you're using uh, heavy braid. Because there are fish out here that'll take your expensive baits, that's for sure. There's another north, or it's a, that's a bass or northern, I think it's a northern. That's a bass. It's a smallmouth. Heck yeah. I think it's a smallmouth. Yeah, it is. It's a smallmouth, guys. Way up here in these reeds, throwing a pink slobber knocker. Check this out. Come on. Guys, check that out, man. Up here, not that deep of water, throwing a pink Berkeley slobber knocker, catching big smallmouth bass in Lake St. Clair. That is awesome. Check that fish out. Heck yeah. That's a surprise catch. <laughs> oh man, I love this place. Everyone's probably out fishing deep for smallmouth. I'm gonna put in here fishing in about two foot of water, crystal clear using 60 pound braid, pink uh, Berkeley slobber knocker catching smallmouth. I seen that bait disappear and I, I thought it was a pike cause it wasn't green, but, or it wasn't like a large mouth, but that smallmouth train wrecked that thing. It goes against all like, when you come to St. Clair, you're usually fishing smallmouth with a drop shot and Ned rig using eight and 10 pound fluorocarbon. I'm up here in the reeds using 60 pound braid, catching largemouth, smallmouth, and pike on a pink slobber knocker. This could get interesting. I, uh, I might do this a little bit more and try to do some more exploring this year out here i just don't i don't fish here enough you guys know i fish mostly in northern michigan and you know dylan dylan and the outdoor conquest you know those guys come out here and absolutely train wreck the smallmouth you know and they do really really good and they know this lake really really good i just don't know it i don't i don't spend any time out here so i figured i'd come out here and do some exploring and try some different stuff and so far you know i, I haven't gone that far really just been working this one area oh man big fish oh i think that was a big smallie he just smoked this bladed jig holy crap i seen him turn sideways on it. that looked like a big smallie wow let me see if i can there's another one up there man he hit it hard dang it Oh man, 
that was a big pike. <laughs> I was just thinking to myself, that's why I love throwing this bladed jig, even in this super clear water, because I can see this thing really, really good. Oh man, there's a lot of fish right here, guys. And what kind of set me off that first, you know, is I lost that, that bladed jig or that slobber knocker to a pike or a muskie. And so far there's been a handful of fish in these reeds right here. Not sure why they're here, but it definitely seems like a little bit deeper water, maybe about two and a half feet, maybe three feet. I mean, super clear visibility, I can see the bottom. But there's some, like an open spot in these reeds. There's like a hard line out there or that I'm sitting right on top of. And this is kind of like an open pocket. So I think these fish are just kind of cruising inside of this open pocket and, uh, you know, looking for bait or whatever. But that was another northern. For sure, I seen him turn on it. But there's a lot of fish up here. Again, like I've mentioned before, when, you, when you're fishing these reeds, you know, whether, oh man, just had another one blow up, turn up on it. I'm gonna throw the fluke in there. Oh, he came back for it. Oh, dang it. <laughs> oh man. But, uh, you know, like I was saying, fishing these open, or fishing these reeds, whether it's, you know, here in Lake St. Clair or in Northern Michigan, um, you wanna kind of fan cast the area once you, once you hook one or get a bite, because there's multiple, there's probably multiple fish around. And, and again, I'm not sure what's keeping these fish here, but definitely something has got them in here. So I don't, I, again, I don't know, it's water temps only 60 degrees, so it's not like it's super warm water. But I mean, I am kind of facing the main part of the lake and I can see white caps out there. So I guess maybe that's something else to kind of consider if you're out here on Lake St. Clair and you guys are, you know, fishing and it's gonna be really, really windy on the main lake, it pipe wouldn't hurt to come into these reeds and uh you know do some fishing at least it, at least it's not super wavy yet i'm not far from the river so i can hop into the river but i'm gonna definitely gonna fish in some of these um canals and these boat docks but yeah i can see white caps out there guys it's gonna blow today i think it's supposed to be like 15 to 20 out of the north uh northeast so i'm just gonna keep on putzing around these reeds and it's gonna rain so i don't know how long i'll be able to stand out here in this cold rain coming but uh yeah there's quite a few fish in here so let's catch some more there he is. Got him. <laughs> it's either a pike or a muskie, one of the two. Come on, come off those reeds. He's wrapped up around those reeds. There. Another pike. <clears throat> Boys, you guys are aggressive. Like Dylan said, where the pike are, the bass are. And like the legend himself said, wherever the pike are eating, predatory fish are eating. That's what the bass are eating, so. Not a giant, but fun to catch. Little pike, he's got a kink in him. Oh, quick, 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 quick. I'm gonna let you go. If you just let me get a hold of you, I will let you go. Well, where the pike are, the bass are. There's a fish. Another northern. Boy, they're chewing at least. Look at that. Choke that thing. So I can tell they want it. Decent large mouth. Nice. Heck yeah. There we go. Another one with that guy. Just still up here in these shallow reeds. He's a little bit, well I say shallow, but may, there may be like, uh, there's maybe about three foot of water underneath of him, I think. Something like that. But uh, yeah, another decent uh, post-spawn female it looks like on the Berkeley Slobberknocker. So just plucking away. I just, 
I know these aren't really big fish, and so I'm maybe not catching a ton of them, but you know, it's just fun to kind of explore new areas and maybe fish fish places that maybe people don't regularly fish for smallmouth or largemouth on Lake St. Clair. So definitely having a decent morning. We've got, uh, let's see, nine so far. So yeah, we're just gonna keep plucking away and fish as long as we can till the rain comes, cause that's coming. But uh, yeah, it's number number nine. So see if we get get a few more. I guess maybe to kind of help you guys out if you're if you're gonna do this. Not that I know what the heck I'm doing because this is honestly the very first time I've ever targeted largemouth in these reeds in Lake St. Clair. But um, you know, there's open pockets in these reeds. And I'm trying to get to them as best I can. It's super windy, so it's really tough. But, um, you know, I'm just kind of looking for those open pockets and casting to them and casting around them. And every once in a while, there's a, there's a fish in them. And uh, like I said, if it was calm out, I'd be throwing a swim jig in here, a uh, motion swim jig. And uh, really, really like working a motion swim jig in these kind of reeds. It works its way really, really good through here. But because it's windy, um, you know, I want to use some sort of bladed jig, get a little bit more vibration. And the water's getting a little bit stained because the wind's blowing so much. So it is getting a little bit of color to it. Um, but like, like I said, this slobber knocker with that through head pin design has been working really, really well for me. Um, you know, got a couple of the bladed jigs I'm going to give a try, but it's just, it's really hard to put this thing down just because I can work it so well. And again, it's not 100% weedless, right? It's still a bladed jig, but I can tell you that uh, for most of the bladed jigs that I've used over the last several years, this one definitely works its way through these reeds better than uh, better than most. So if you guys are going to fish these little pencil reeds, whatever you want to call them, on Lake St. Clair, chasing after largemouth and even an occasional smallmouth, make sure you guys get yourself some of these Berkeley slobber knockers. And, uh, you know... Whatever color your preference is, black and black, they got a really cool black and purple one. They got a couple natural colored ones. They got a fire crawl one. But uh, you guys know me, I'm, I'm buying the white ones in uh, Dyna Pink. And as you can see, it's hard for me to, uh, you know, put them down. One other thing to look forward to, I know this is probably going to be kind of weird, but anywhere there's swans, there's actually a, a swan out here. But I've been seeing some swans. I've been seeing some, some ducks and some wildlife, seen some bugs on the... Uh, on the uh, surface of the water. Huh, extreme outdoorsman. Fish on. Fish on. He's still <laughs> catching up. Yeah, I just let go about a two and a half pound largemouth. That's <laughs> 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 crazy. Yeah. <laughs> He's still up where you're at. Yeah, yep, same spot. <laughs> 